I'm Lillian, the postmodern mom, and welcome back to my channel. This is a bump update. I am 30 weeks pregnant. I can't believe it's been four weeks since my last video, but we actually went on holiday to the US. So I didn't do any bump updates then, and now we are back and have settled in. Um, it took about like a week off uh, to just readjust and get over jet lag. And I had my um, midwife appointment already last uh, last week. So like the week that we came back, I already saw the midwife. I just got back today from a chiropractor appointment, which was great because I've been feeling really tight around my lower back. Um, but so this is 30 weeks. This is my 30 week video. I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and cleaning and supporting your husband. So if you're new to my channel, I am a traditional Hi, housewife, bye. Um, American living in the UK, and I stay at home with my two children. This is my youngest son, my younger boy, and we're expecting our third baby. And so this baby is due in May 2020, and we only have like another two months left or less, yeah. Okay. And uh, anyway, it, we're really excited yeah. about the arrival of this third baby because we are we've decided to go with a private midwife, and it'll be our first time using a private private midwife in the UK. You cannot interrupt me all the time. Okay, you sit here, be quiet. Why? Unless you went upstairs. So what's new? Um, I feel like I haven't grown as much as I felt like I was uh, at 26 weeks pregnant. And uh, my symptoms are really good, like I don't have very many symptoms. Um, in general, the baby is still moving a lot and very active and the heart rate is high as well. So my friend across the street thinks that if you have a heart rate that's above 150, Mommy. it's for sure a girl. That's their take on it. So um, I'm actually becoming more and more inclined thinking that this baby is actually a girl, not a boy. Uh, and I feel like I'm still carrying rather high. I don't have that line for my belly button down, which people say that when they have it, it usually means it's a boy. So. Um, and I've had it with him, actually I had a quite dark line for for my son's pregnancy. But for my first pregnancy, I didn't have a very dark line, and that was a girl. So I'm beginning to think more and more that this baby might be a girl, uh, which is really exciting because we brought back some girl clothes, some baby girl clothes that we had uh, stored in my mom's basement. and. When my mom comes this time, she's also going to bring some more baby girl clothes, uh, whether or not we know or not, because she might be coming before the baby's born. So, um, if she comes after the baby's born and it's a boy, then obviously she doesn't need to bring the clothes, but um, we have a lot of baby girl clothes in storage that I'm really excited to pull out and reuse. Uh, besides that, last minute, um, my friend across the street, I noticed in her house, she had an infant car seat. Her daughter is like the same age as my son. So she's like, yeah, I don't need it anymore, but you have it. So I was like, great. So now I have an infant car seat that we can use when the baby is a newborn. And what did you do there? Ouch. That's very bad. No. Don't touch it. No. Mommy has to put something on it. No. Don't touch it, okay? Um, but traveling while pregnant during this coronavirus scare was a little bit strange for me. Um, I felt like, you know, oh, maybe we should take extra precautions and not to go certain places. Um, but when we had to, when we had to fly and go to the airport, there were a lot of people around. So we did and buy masks and travel with masks on, <laughs> and. Um, I felt like that really did help me 
feel a bit more confident walking around is just to have that initial barrier. Um, and then when we got back here to the UK, Felipe insisted that we get ready for the coronavirus and stocked up a little bit on toilet rolls. And <laughs> I'm only saying that because people have been fighting, like fist fights over toilet rolls. But no, all I, all I bought was an extra, like just a normal family pack. You can wait, you wait, you be quiet. Um, but other than that, ah, I did have at one point, well when, it, when we landed in America, I had a lot of Braxton Hicks and some pelvic pain for the first time and I was thinking, oh no, I better not have this baby in America because I don't know if we have any insurance and everything's so much more expensive um, if you don't have insurance especially in, in America. So, but we didn't have the baby in America and we are here in the UK. Um, just resuming with all the, the regular visits that I have with my midwife and I'm going to be meeting up with the health visitor soon because they do like a before you give birth visit um, just to talk about if I have any concerns about the newborn and what the procedures are and how they come and visit after 10 days. Um, but yeah, I'll have that in a couple weeks time, maybe next Monday I think, on Monday. Not this Monday, but next Monday I think we'll have that um, meeting with the health visitor. And health visitors get a lot of bad rap because they don't seem to have an um, understanding of raising children, so they would like probably pressure us to make sure we get all of the medical interventions that they provide. But um, anyway, I'm not gonna go there in this video. In general, I had some pelvic pain and ache pain when we were walking. And I had to slow down a lot. It was like one day where we were walking outside a lot or something. And I think Felipe was getting a little nervous then. But um, since then, being here, I've taken it really easy. And I feel like everything is going really smoothly. So let's just compare the size of my bump with the red dress. And um, yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> well, there it is. So, according to the measurement that they take from the top of my uterus of the pelvic, the pubic bone, which is called fundal height. I'm right on target. Uh, the baby size has grown just consistently from the last time they checked. Uh, I think it was like 31 centimeters and I'm, I was 30 plus four weeks. The number of centimeters should be similar to, huh, the number of centimeters should be similar to the number of weeks pregnant you are. I'm hoping to get together with the videographer again, just to touch base and see what's, um, uh, it, have, you know, just to get comfortable with each other. Uh, the, the midwife, our private midwife, seems very concerned that just to make sure that we are controlling our home situation really well, that we don't have too many strangers showing up. And um, so that would be, that's pretty good. I'm, oh, she gave me a book to look at because obviously, because um, in the past I had trouble with third stage. So she gave me this book to read, Birthing Your Placenta, The Third Stage of Labor, by Dr. Nadine Edwards and Dr. Sarah Wickham. Now, I'm familiar with Sarah Wickham because that she's an author of a, a blog called Midwife Thinking, which I really like all of her stuff. So I'm gonna read through this, and um, the main question that I wanted to look at was in here, and it was just one of, I just flipped open to it, how long should we wait? page 27. Unfortunately, it doesn't just tell me an, an easy answer, so I guess I'm gonna to have to read it. Um, it looks like uh, a study of women cared for by New Zealand midwives found that only 11.3% of more than 16,000 women who had physiological placental birth experienced a third stage longer than 40 minutes. However, they proposed that up to 90 minutes, so an hour and a half, 
could be normal for some women. It's important to differentiate between what is average and situations which might be considered unusual, obviously. Um, and that's the thing that I find really annoying about the NHS is that they, they have, it just seems like they have this one system and if you don't fit into that box then something's wrong with you. And birth is so, it varies so much. Uh, so I think we need, you need to have a midwife that is experienced and able to um, have lots of experience uh, that she can draw upon to make a good um, assessment of the situation. So some women I have heard of um, have birth like the placenta three hours later and clearly that's like way out of the NHS norm. It probably wasn't an NHS midwife, but if you have an independent private or just a good midwife attending you, then she'll be able to look at your situation and think, is this normal or not? And if everything is going okay with your body, then what's the point of rushing anything? So um, I'm looking forward to telling you how this book goes, I guess, and also just um, how the birth goes in general. So uh, hopefully I'll be a little bit more frequent with my videos, but unfortunately I just feel like I have nothing really to talk about. We've already got the birthing pool liner I ordered um, and we're going to pull the accessories down and the birth pool and set it up and do a test run soon. I have to waterproof the bed and pack the bags by 35 weeks, um, but I still feel like I have some time to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I would appreciate it if you looked us up on, if you looked me up on Twitter, or um, if you went to our Postmodern Family Patreon page. And you can also find my music that I make, and that is available to purchase, downstream, download, and stream online on iTunes and Spotify, and Google Play, Amazon. And that's if you just look up the Postmodern Family. I have three albums out, and all of the proceeds go to me. Um, 100% so you would get music that hopefully you enjoy classical music and um, you would be supporting a traditional housewife and traditional family thanks for watching bye, bye. I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and cleaning and supporting your husband